Um, it's the same problem as what we practiced, uh, the example problem and also the second and homework problem, right? So as I said, uh, like all the solid mechanics class, uh, no matter if it's like um, the uh, mechanics materials, aerospace structure, FBA, uh, Mac one, it's about like either in general term, we can say that stress equal to force of a cross-section something property, geometry property. So I can either ask you what the maximum force can be applied like that's the problem we did in the example, right? Uh, or what is the minimum dimension? Or I give you the force and dimension, ask you what is stress. There's only three ways to ask it. And the, for the change of geometry, change the coordinate system, change the force, that should be fine. That's different numbers, right? And also the coordinate system is given here from the beginning of the, the class. So I didn't like add anything. So. You should know that this is a coordinate system and you should use this coordinate system um, for your calculation. And also another thing that uh, it is okay, this is the first quiz ever in this class. So you guys are confused about like the unit PSI, PS pound inch, and also like Newton meter, uh, Haskell kind of thing. Uh, but for the future, all the tests, um, you, you need to figure out by yourself. Uh, I mean, you do need to know all the different unit systems. Have you heard that? NASA failed a mission because they mixed the units. You need to know, you are an engineer. I should not ask uh, me to help you figure out uh, what is the KSI, what is PSI, what is Pascal, what is the Pascal, right? You are an engineer, you should know. So let's continue with the uh, class. <laughs> So we will talk about the strain in the last class and um just back here and just talk about deformation. So uh, of course, uh, there's a reason we we'll talk about strain because when you talk about failure theory later, you know that sometimes we use stress. Well, most of the time we consider the stress like uh, depend on different material, ductile material or uh, uh or the basic material. We may use maximum principal stress as the uh, um criteria for to, to decide using fair or not, or for the ductile material, we may use the um the maximum shear stress or mommy stress to determine if your structure fair or not. But sometimes if the deformation is critical, we may also use the strain uh to determine if it's like strain exceeding some threshold, I would consider it's failure. So for example, if you have a uh, space power or some 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 system that is very um, that we need some sensor alignment and somehow your stress, your deformation because external force applied make the uh, deformation too large, it may be not allowable. So in that situation, it's not just about stress anymore. We also need to consider if the strain meet our requirements. So that's why uh, it is equally important to know the strain as well as the stress. Uh, so uh, in the last class, we talked about the strain, strain components, normal strain, shear strain, definition, how to calculate them if you know displacement field. So that's basically your homework, homework problem, problem two, right? Um, so now, of course, uh, as we talk about like failure theory, maximum, shear, maximum normal strain, maximum shear strain, um, I do not plan to talk about in detail because it's basically the same thing as status stress matrix, we have three by three matrix, and we use eigen we calculate the eigenvalue of the matrix. We find the principal stresses, three principal stresses, and the uh the maximum maximum principal stress we compare with allowable stress, and we decide if it's failure or not, right? And the same thing, if we put this uh strain component into a three by three matrix, you do the same thing. Find the eigenvalues, they become the principal uh principal strains, and find the eigenvectors that become the corresponding direction, of course. If you know the which direction it deformed the most normal strain, you want to know the plane, right? Same thing. You find the eigenvalues and the eigenvector 
very similar to what we did for the stress uh, calculation. So I will just quickly put it here directly. Um, the strain we defined uh, in the last class, we called it the engineering shear strain. And before we put it into the matrix, we need to use the tensorial strain. This is the gamma yz and gamma zx, which is the engineering shear strain. And for the tensor ratio string, <laughs> we use epsilon xy equal to half of the gamma xy. And similarly, yz half of gamma yz. And this. So now we put the uh, all the normal strain, shear strain in a three by three matrix. It becomes X. This is normal strain. Let's use x, x, y, y, c, c. And for the shear strain, tensorial shear strain, um, x, y, x, c, y, x, y, c, z, x, z, y. Very similar to the status stress matrix, the three by three matrix. So, uh, of course, this is symmetric. Uh, uh, epsilon xy always equal to epsilon yz, xz, zx, uh, yz, zy. Uh, so, very similar. It only have six independent components. So we, we said that for state of stress at a point, this three by three can completely define the stress at that point. And similarly here, uh, this three by three matrix about the strain can completely define the deformation at a point. So now let's say that if so for some structure is really critical about the deformation itself, uh, it's more important than stress, well, we can check both. But if it's required to check the like, we want to make sure it's maximum normal strain below some threshold. We want to make sure that the maximum shear strain be below some threshold. We do the same thing. So we find the eigenvalues. Principal strains. This also put as epsilon one. X2, three. So these are the three eigenvalues of this three by three matrix. Calculation process is the same as you find the principal stress and principal direction. And principal strain direction. There are the eigenvectors we put as n one and two and three.
And similarly, the, these three directions should be orthogonal to each other. It's, it's, a, it's the same thing as the uh, principal stress and principal direction. And about maximum shear strain, uh, it's the same. It's the half of the... Um, Maximum normal strain minus minimum normal strain. Um, and convention is same. We still put the maximum uh, principal strain as one, and then uh, the minimum is three. So uh, the maximum epsilon one minus epsilon three half is the maximum shear strain. So if there's a situation that you need to consider to find out uh, the maximum normal strain and maximum shear strain, you know how to calculate. So uh, I do not plan to do any exam problem for this topic because as I said, it's the same as the state of stress, principal stresses, principal directions, maximum shear stress, mm -hmm. right? It's the same, it's just repetition. So now let's move on to the now we have stress, we have strain, we have stress regulation. So it's not like, they're not like independent parameters. So, um, Again, we start our derivation from the simple situation, 1D situation. Uh, if you have a 1D bar, and you have the force in the actual direction, what, what, what is the stress and strain relation? In 1D situation, simple situation. What is the relation between the stress and the strain in the structure? Law. Law. Yes. What, what is the parameter part? Yes, yes. Young's modulus. Right. So uh, that is the simple situation is stress equal to Young's modulus times strain. Uh, but <laughs> this is only for one dissociation. I have so like so many students make mistake in the senior design, like the next three or uh, the error design class. The, in the final print, they say, okay, this relation between the stress and strain is Young's modulus, F, sigma equal to F, um times E. This is only for 1D. When you get more complicated situation, it's not this relation anymore. So um, do not just like use this one for the whole, for your whole life. This is only for 1D. Uh, and of course, if you remember in, in your previous class, you, you may realize that uh, this is also uh, before the proportion limit. So it is any range. And after the range, uh, plus formation, right? So, uh, Y axis, X axis is strain, Y axis is the stress. So uh, it's only it refers to this range. But of course, all the solid mechanics class in undergrad level is all within the proportion limit. Anything beyond the proportion limit, when you start plastic information, it's not our uh, topic anymore. So is only in this range, and we have the slope of this straight line is Young's modulus. Of course, this is the simple situation. Now let's back to uh, more complicated situation we talk about in this class. Uh, we have the state of stress matrix. We have, we just talked about the strain matrix. What the relation between these two? It's gonna be very complicated, right? Because the stress is three by three, and the strain is three by three. So the relation, if there's a uh, 
some something to represent the relation between these two is it be a photo tensor. So, but we know that to sim mathematically to simplify this relation between these two, we know that well, CMAP is a symmetric matrix. It only has six independent components. Same for string. It is a three by three matrix. It has nine components, but it only has six independent components. And um, what we can do that to simplify this, uh, the calculation between these two, we can put as two vectors. And each vector can include six independent components. So what we can do is that take my x, take my y, take my z, how y z, tau z x, tau x y. And we have big matrix in between to represent the relation between these two. And for the strain, just uh, three by three matrix, I also write as a vector with six components, six independent components. So strain, normal strain in the x direction, normal strain in the y direction, and z direction, and uh, shear strain. Zx, xy. And uh, now if we write in this way, we can say that, well, we change the sigma to a vector now. So I can write in this way, equal to a C matrix strain vector. So what should be the dimension of C matrix? Six by six, yes, thank you. So now this is a six by six um, matrix. It defines the relation between the strain and the stress. Um, Young's modulus, and it's also related to Poisson ratio. So strain in the x direction equal to uh, sigma x's um, over Young's modulus, but also caused by the y and the z. So negative Poisson ratio. And x is y y z z. About a shear stress, x y tau x y shear modulus, and similarly the relation between the y z and z x uh, is the same. Shear modulus and also z x equal to shear stress. And again, the shear modulus, Young's modulus, Poisson ratio, they are not three independent <laughs> parameters either. Um, so the relation between the shear modulus and the Young's modulus and Poisson ratio um, is Young's modulus here and double one plus Poisson ratio. So this G is the shear modulus. So this equation is very convenient for you to calculate if the stress is given and the material property is given. So if the stress is given and the material property is given, so Young's modulus and the Poisson ratio, they are the material property. So basically, if you know what material you want to use, uh, you can find uh, the Young's modulus 
and the ratio of that material. So basically you can use this one to calculate the strength, the deformation in the structure, right? And the same thing, if the shear stress they're given, and again, if you know Young's modulus uh, and Poisson ratio, you know the shear modulus, you can calculate the shear strength. And of course, I can make it even more complicated. So basically, um, a lot of the time the stre stress is not given, but if you know what's the external pilot force, you know the structure, you can calculate stress based on material, you can calculate deformation. Make sense? So I can make this, keep making this problem more complicated uh, by adding on what we learned in the previous class. Uh, and of course, uh, if we want to in other ways, so let's say somehow you have the, let's say I give you the, uh, the allowable strain and you need to calculate what's maximum force capitalized you can do it in reverse way. So uh, instead of you to derive the equation by yourself, I can give the equation directly if we want to convert the strain to stress, uh, just inverse matrix. So I can put the equation here directly and you can use in your homework please exam directly. So sigma yy, sigma zz. Young's modulus, Poisson ratio, and one minus two Poisson ratio. And on this side is strain in x, normal strain in x, normal strain in y, and normal strain, normal strain in z. And of course, the shear strain stress relation is the shear strain. Is the denominator one plus zero, one minus two? Minus yes, yes, yes. This right clear. And this, uh, well, shear strain, shear stress is just like, uh, it is, it's, it's linear relation, it's the relation between the shear modulus. So uh, this is the theory part. Uh, if we know the stress, how to find a strain. If we know the strain, how to find a stress. These two equations uh, will be provided in all the tests. Any question? Um, if no, if no question, uh, thank you for coming class and have a great day. Okay, Since the uh, event is coming up, I'm just wanting to make sure you got my like, oh, medicine. Come on, um, last night. You, I can do the season Perfect, because I sent the wrong one first, so I just wanted to make sure you got it. Okay, okay I should have this. I sent it a while ago. Like, Okay. All right. Uh, thank you.
Oh yeah, I sent the wrong class at first. And I was like, I was like, oh no. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm gonna resend it. And I'm just gonna double check it for the. All right, good enough. This is during the like how do you decide when someone something something the signal is max? This is because it's usual. It's like a single cross section, and then the distribution is like linear change. Oh, like this. Yeah, like this, like this. So, uh, it may be maximum. It's maximum on top and bottom, and zero and zero because it's so. Okay. You, you cannot say just one thing because yeah, okay. there is a background. Okay. okay. And just regarding the list, you, you use there? Yeah. Actually, I'm close with yeah. the name. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why EQ IG. Because there, like you have the F. Oh, so the, the F. F. The F. Yes. So, uh, in general, in question, I want to make consistent with testing. The testing, we always put a V when you talk about like this transfer shear, we use V representing the transfer shear force. But in the specific problem here, the F in the Y direction becomes the transfer shear force. So right. F is the V. F, Y, U. Okay. Yeah. Can I look at it without writing it? I forgot which one I bought. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then C, C, G. P C G. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna try. Yeah. Hey, what is C? C the radius. Okay. Yeah, C the radius. Okay. And there, there's the moment. And the moment. Yes. So I did three, okay. four, and then I moved okay. to the yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, it was over the other side. Oh, wait. Oh, it's really confusing me. I know. No, I think I might not have. Well, it might not have because when I solve for it the way I used to do it, like with like statics. Yeah. This is going here. I don't know. Well, I bet the police should just look at it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not easy. Oh, I forgot. Sorry. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah.